so the next part of this idea of making um, digestion efficient is uh, to deal with the whole small intestine now you can actually think of it in two sections I suppose I'm going to very 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 simplify this hugely for a moment um, the top section of it called the duodenum is where bile and um, enzymes are secreted so bile would come in from the bile duct and enzymes would come in from the pancreas okay and they come down what's called a duct which is just a tube I suppose and both of those things would, would be in here um, so fats are emulsified if you want to go back and look at the the bile video do so um, in this part and the the enzymes come in which are going to start doing their job the second section is where the food that has been digested and made soluble is absorbed into the blood should have used a different colour here but that's that's going to be the blood vessels okay now I've drawn them sort of sticking out the outside in reality the blood would be really close and we'll look at the structure in a second but I just wanted to give the idea that in this second section in the small intestine by far the longest part um, this is where the absorption takes place okay um, so if we zoom in on this this second part of the the small intestine what's going on here well this is the bit where we have the villi and the villi or the villus is the singular are these um, they, they sometimes call them finger like extensions of the gut I always think that they remind me of um, bathroom mats those well if you don't know what I mean it doesn't make any difference to you but that's what it always reminds me of um, and they, they look a bit like this so sometimes we draw them Sort of sitting on from the side like that in reality you know your small intestine is a, a tube and so these things would be all the way all the way long and all the way through but we're just uh, drawing them like this just from the side um, now there's two things going on in here uh, let's use now you don't need to worry too much about this bit I'm drawing in here um, these are known as lacteal ducts or, or lymph so I'll just mention this basically any fats any lipids that end up um, being absorbed through here are going to go into this um, this liquid here which is called lymph um, and it's this property of lipids not really mixing very well with water I suppose that, that can cause problems so the lipids don't actually go into the blood they go into the lymph but it doesn't make a big deal of it in the book um, so I'm not going to make a particularly big deal of it here what you do have inside here is a really really good section of blood vessels and capillaries so they've got a really good blood supply okay now this is why um, after you've eaten a meal a lot of blood gets diverted down towards your intestines uh, in order to absorb the food more efficiently this is why you're not supposed to go swimming after eating not because you'll sink you know you're not going to sink unless you've eaten several kilograms of food the problem is that the blood, a lot of blood goes down here to the small intestine, which means it's not in your muscles. So if you're going swimming, there's not as much blood in your muscles, you're more likely to have problems like cramping and getting into difficulty. So that's, that's what it's about. Now the kind of question you get about, asked about this is, um, you usually you get asked what are the properties of the villi that make them good for absorbing um, nutrients. So the fact that there are lots of them gives them a large... Um, and uh, not the shape of them as well actually I'll, I'll try and show that in a second they have a large surface area now anything that's going to absorb whether it's um, the villi in the small intestine whether it's your lungs the alveoli uh, whether it's a leaf for absorbing sunlight they're always going to have a large surface area um, by folding things over you can get more area into a smaller space and that's the idea with the villi now if you look at the surface of the villi, you know, if we zoomed in again, the surface of it is actually covered in like smaller villi that sort of stick out. I'm not going to do them all. But these are called microvilli. It looks like it's got a little uh, little fringe on it. Oops, I can't see it down there. Little fringe or little sometimes it's called brush border. I'm sticking off that. And again, that is just going to increase the surface area even further. So microvilli will also help increase that surface area. 
the villi themselves are pretty thin so not too thick if there was loads and loads of cells in here big layers of cells um, it'd be difficult to get through to the blood in the middle but they, they don't they're very thin there may be only a few layers of cells to get through so not not lots and lots of cells like I've drawn here just a few so thin um, and this good blood supply which means that the dissolved substances can pretty quickly get into the blood and be carried away in the body okay try and avoid using terms like goodness and badness you know, to get all the goodness out of the food doesn't mean anything you're trying to absorb soluble nutrients now our uh, keep going off the screen today sorry um, the small intestine itself about six seven meters long most of which is the absorbing part um, and it needs to be that long because as active organisms being mammals um, we need a lot of nutrition particularly um, energy now if the small intestine wasn't that long we simply wouldn't be able to absorb as many nutrients as we need to be this active if you are for example um, so let's say like a reptile um, your energy demand is much much lower and as a result food tends to stay in your small intestine a lot longer they don't have as an efficient a small intestine um, your fish don't either really they're just not as good as absorbing food but they don't need to be because their energy demand simply is not as high um, birds and mammals massive massive energy demand in order to keep their bodies warm um, so it's a pretty efficient system and all of these things here help it become efficient I just want to quickly mention enzymes because this is a bit of a thing I have a, a mild problem with suppose um, the enzymes that are secreted from the pancreas basically this will be carbohydrases things like amylase proteases things like pepsin and lipases that will break down lipids now you're safe if you say all of those enzymes are produced and secreted by the pancreas and the bit I'm not so happy with, but it's in your book, so we'll go with it, is that the small intestine will also secrete carbohydrates, proteases, and lipases. It says it in the book, so we can say you know the, the same thing. Um, the reason I don't like it so much, I'm not convinced actually that lipases are particularly secreted. Um, there might be some form that, that comes out. The carbohydrates and proteases, yeah, they are definitely secreted by the small intestine. Lipases, not so sure. But as far as we're concerned, pancreas and small intestine will secrete all three of these there are other parts of your digestive system that do secrete enzymes notably your stomach will secrete proteases um, and your salivary glands um, the saliva they, they secrete contains amylase which is a carbohydrate okay but that is by far the main thing that you'll be asked about on this kind of stuff